Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. I'm Angela, Angela Porter and it's Sunday the 12th of February 2023 and it's actually half past one in the afternoon. So I'm sort of deciding whether I go out for a walk or not but I thought I'll get a video done first then if I can get it processed quickly and uploaded while it's uploading I can have my wander. So there we are. So what you can see in front of me is it's a page in my sketchbook and what you can see here is I actually can't take credit for this. I did see it somewhere and I thought, oh, why didn't I realise this? Spiral bound sketchbook. So I took the spiral binding out and instead I put in these um, binder rings so they unclip quite easily so you can take individual pages in and out. And I could really do that with this but I'm not and I am drawing because essentially um, it's com comfort drawing at the moment so nothing for my accordion journal I was at a meeting this morning of kinds um, and I was drawing during that it's drawing in meetings I actually am able to focus a lot more on what's being said and to take it in than if I'm um, you know, having to watch and pay attention that way. Um, this keeps part of my mind busy so that the important bit that needs, or the bit that needs to listen, can actually listen easier. I know it sounds bonkers, but you know, a lot of people doodle and draw. I always explain to people, just in case they think I'm being rude, I'm not. It just helps me to focus on what's being said. Always been that way as long as I can remember. University, it would be taking notes, so I'd be constantly writing and drawing that way as a way of recording what was being said and talked about. But I'd be listening, same at school if I could. So, I'm just touching up some areas where I was sitting at an awkward angle and didn't quite notice the patchy bits. I can just go back and add that in. So I am going to use a lot of these motifs again in this. I do want to leave some open space because it's getting a bit crowded. But some of my favourite things to draw are here in patterns. And some that perhaps maybe not so much. Things I haven't used often before. But I thought you might like to join me in this. So I'm just going to move some pens out the way. So to start with I'm using an 05 Pigma Micron. I'll try and get that so you can see it. And I also have an O1 Pigma Micron that I'm using for the finest lines, which has fallen over. And then I have an O3 Unipin from Uniball. It's a fine line pen. And um, I was drawing yesterday and I did post a picture on my social media of what I was doing. But I chose not to bring that upstairs with me. Um, I was using one of the Copic SP pens. I think I was using the 0.25. So it's a lot finer than this line. I also found the ink isn't quite as black. I'm quite happy to have quite black lines here. Could just be because the pen was so fine that it just looks that less black, but I don't know. So yeah, so yesterday um mentioned this recently. Is that I'm having a bit of a roller coaster time with my emotions, which then has a knock on effect on my thinking. And it's all been a bit yeah, a bit hairy scary. Do you know what? While I'm talking, I'll take this page out of here because that noise is going to annoy me and I bet it's going to annoy you. Uh, should have done it first, but we'll be all right. You can see how much I struggle with this. Once I've got the knack of doing this, it'll be, woohoo, we can do this really quickly. But perhaps not today. Let me just take it over here so I can do it at a slant. So yesterday was a day where I just needed to do some familiar, very comforting kind of art. Nothing that would push me outside of my, you know, too much of a comfort zone. Because art for me isn't just my job. Because it is. This is, you know, my career. 
I make um, a living from it, or you know, some of my living from it at least. Oh, I've got two pages out. That's fine. I'll take the other one out because no doubt I'll want to use an extra one at some point. So saves me wrangling with this. There we go. That's better. And I'll refocus. And I just needed something that wasn't going to be too taxing for me or too um, too different so that I could actually relax into what I was doing. So I've sort of like fallen back on my my kind of art, which I I called entangled art. And I called it that long before I found Zentangle. Not that I'm a Zentangler per se, I would say. Um, I love the patterns. I love some of the ideas of deconstructing the patterns and making use of them. But um, when I do go to a tea entangle class with Tracy Hoff once a week, mostly, though I may miss this week. And next week I definitely will because I've got a meeting to go to in the evening. And um, I, uh, so this is my default kind of art for one. I really need that time and breathing space to just let my brain work through what it needs to, to have something that soothes me and um, helps me in achieving that feeling of balance. It's that familiarity. And I had a mega big dose last night of Star Wars. I think I watched, I say last night, yesterday afternoon and into the night. I think I watched four Star Wars films yesterday. I did. Four. And I will be looking forward to watching some more later on, probably. I haven't decided yet, but the chances are I will. Once you start, well, when you're me, I need to see the, maybe not the whole series, because I um, certainly have my favourite ones. And, uh, but there's a series, I need to finish them, so I will. Perhaps I'll go out and get some nice snacks or something as a treat. So I'm feeling a lot better today. I think I've had a couple of nights where I've slept fairly well as well. And a couple of days where, well now, today, where I haven't um, had um, people. It's been people-free days because I like people, but... I can have too much people as well and um, too much of people can drain me an awful lot in the last week was too much added that there are other things that are going on in my life that I'm not going to talk about yet it could be well it's interesting and will hopefully answer some questions I have about myself and lead to a better understanding and perhaps acceptance of myself. And that's causing all kinds of ups and downs and changes elsewhere with other people in my life. And that's been disturbing me in ways that I have to make adjustments to. And I'm not very good with change. You know, I can, but sometimes it all comes all at once. It's a bit like buses, as we say over here in the UK. And I certainly have had a busload of changes. OK, so I'm not talking through this. I can zoom in a bit. There we go. So I've just put a series of arches here. They're rounded arches because I love Romanesque architecture. And if patterns carved like this is what you would actually find in Romanesque architecture. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to go and thicken the lines 
on certain sides so that you get a feeling of dimension to this. So I've in these bottom triangles I've done the one the lines that are on the right hand side. So the next layer of triangles up I'm going to thicken the ones that are on the left hand side. And I'm using the O3 pen for this because I don't want to have a, a super thick line I could get if I'd use the O5. But this one just allows me just to broaden these lines just that little bit more. And then these ones here could go to that side again, could go in that side. Then I think I could go there. I might go to that side. Let's have a look. Not sure that works. I think it's going to create a bit of confusion, but it'll be fine. And if I add colour to this, it'll be done digitally. I'm just telling you now. It's not something I'm going to do um, with traditional media. So, so I am doing better today. I feel lighter, not so weighed down. The um, sense of fear and existential dread that I've been carrying around for, oh, I don't know, two, three weeks, perhaps longer, seems to have lifted for now at least. And that's a huge help because if I feel that, my brain will start coming up with reasons why I feel that way. The logic kicks in and that leads me down the thoughts that aren't good. And yeah, but I also know that the phrase this too shall pass applies and it's just a case of working through it and understanding what is going on and that I don't need to have that level of fear. And often it's based on past experiences and, and so on, and it's an automatic reaction. So, okay, next one up, I'll do, I'm going to do another pattern that's based on triangles. I'm going to do it in a little bit of a different way. These triangles may not match up with the row below, which actually I wish they did, but it will be fine because I will make it work as it is. So like this, and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to thicken these lines again to the ones that are to the left hand side of these downward pointing triangles. And yet it looks like a set of monster teeth meshed together, but it won't for long. Well, it might do, but hopefully not. There are some amazing um, grotesques and um, animal heads, you know, fantastical animal heads and teeth um, from Romanesque sculpture. And one of my favourites is a door knocker at Dimmock Church. Dimmock is spelt D-Y-M-O-C-K. If I remember, I will put a link to a picture of it in the description. And I absolutely love this door knocker or door doorknob handle thing. And it's got these teeth that hold the ring that you move around or you use as a knocker. It's not the original one on the door because it, the original one was const, had been stolen a number of times. They recovered it because it's a bit unique. Um, and... Um, so they now have a replica there, so it can be stolen if necessary by people, because people are like that for some reason. I have seen it, but the, the church wasn't open the day I went there. So I couldn't touch it. They have a big, big um, iron gate in front of it, you know. I do love it very much. Okay, so with these in, inner triangles... The big triangle, I put the thicker line to the left, and the inside one, I put it to the right. So it looks like we've got, um, this looks raised up in comparison to inside. And then here, underneath, I, I could put lines going down, but I'm actually going to do them going across. And I'm also going to, in the whole sections like this, I'm just going to put a break in the middle so there's a little bit of 
almost like a little highlight that occurs there. I'm not trying to get these lines to match up side to side. That's too much effort today. I'm just going to try and keep them fairly equidistant in comparison to each other. So they, you know, it's just more of a texture than it is carrying on the pattern. And I'm fine with things not lining up exactly. So yeah, so it's been an exhausting week. I'm glad I'm finally, well, slept quite a bit last night, the night before I did. And that certainly does help because the lack of sleep and doesn't, doesn't help me with resilience at all. Sun's coming out now, so we'll get some of this done and I'm going to go for a walk. First Factor 50 sun cream will have to go on. I'd have to put it on whether the sun was out or not. Because the stress and strain of the last few weeks has caused... Um, I've got rosacea on my face and it's a lot better than it used to be. But the stress has provoked it. So I'm using special cream again and having to make sure that I use... Um, this. I think I might actually, I'm tempted to go back here with and create something that's a bit more like burlap or sackcloth, but I've, I don't know, I can leave it like that because I can, yeah, we'll see. And then one here, I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to my, that's the 01, so let's go back to the 08. And I'm going to put another pattern made of triangles here, but I'm going to have these just coming about halfway down this space. Now, if this was sculpture, these would be identical in size and spacing and depth, but it's not. I'm drawing. And then what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to put lines that go to the left from the point. So however much you want. And then I'm going to draw a line here that is parallel to the side of the triangle like this. And again, this creates that volume. So the line that I draw at the bottom needs to be kind of parallel to the line, to the lines here and here. And then we need one just there. So I've now got this kind of arrangement. I think I went off screen. I'm sorry if I did. I've got this kind of arrangement going on here and um, I could do all kinds of things on the bottom but I think what I'm going to do I'm going to put a little semicircle underneath each one of these triangular sections like so just like that and then I'm going to thicken this side again, but I'm going to fill this side on these in with black because it's not going to be quite as deep as on the triangles there. But I'm going to go back and fill the triangle bits in. And just move that down. It's one of my problems. I'm useless with zooming in. And because I've got such a big piece of paper here as well, I am going to actually go back and fill these in with black because that then will be consistent with what's below and then the background when I add colour or shading that can be put a bit further back as well. So if you think about it these are in dark shadow these are towards the front so they're going to be the lightest colour and then the back will be a mid-tone more or less probably with some shading, just a little bit, perhaps a shadow, where shadow would fall. But maybe not, I'll see how I feel when I get there. Okay, so underneath this, this series of three arches, 
which would could be, would be called a third order arch in Romanesque architecture, third order, because there's three of them. <laughs> Honestly, you get door, on doors and so on as well. You get um, however many columns are there. It's a, you know, a th third order or fifth order door, or seventh order or whatever. I love, love it. And it's been so long since I've spent any time at any of these beautiful churches and abbeys and so on. And, um, cathedrals. The weather's getting milder and I'm getting a bit braver about going out at times. So sketchbook and camera, quite nice. Okay, so I've filled this edge in here with... Um, I, I could get a ruler out and draw a perfectly straight line, but that goes against the grain. So I put some deliberate little wobbles in. And then as long as I do the same all the way around, it looks like it's deliberate, which it actually is. Whereas if I was trying to draw straight lines freehand, um, I'd mess, mess up and it'd be an obvious mess up. If I use a ruler, I smudge the lines every single time. And it doesn't matter if I use the ruler, a ruler that's slightly raised, me and rulers. They're great for putting guidelines in, measuring, but not for using ink with. Never have been for me. I've got no idea why. I'm just so clumsy with them. But it's all good. There we go. So under here is where I think I'm going to leave this, kind of. Except I do want to have a couple more leaves coming out from these plants here. I've got one here which you might just be able to see actually. Yeah, that's actually the seed pod there. And we've got the leaf going behind it. So I'm going to draw one here and I'll try and do it in stages so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start by going along. I'm going to go along this and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to go back like this. Now I know that's part of the Zentangle thingy, but I actually don't know what the Zentangle thingy is called. Okay, then I'm going to go to this side here. I'll try and get my hands out the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go out, in, lump, lump, and the last lump can go there. Okay, so I've got a frilly edge to my leaf. Um, strictly, I would have preferred it to go out and in a bit more, so these would get smaller, but it is what it is, and, well, I'll work with it as it is. The other thing I'd like to do, apart from adding ink in the places where it meets other parts of the design, I'm also going to put shading to the left and bottom. I say shading. Um, I'm going to thicken the lines so it gives that feeling that this leaf isn't just um, tissue paper thin, that there is some thickness to it. I'm looking here as to how I can get some thickness in here, and I think here might be the place. I'm going to use a finer pen and I'm going to pop the central line in there, but I'm also going to pop a line there and because this sort of curls around it would almost go back this way perhaps if I pop that there I have that like that then they might make more sense but I quite like that I'll do another one and this time I'm going to do it um, go this way Ooh, that one's got a long one of those. I didn't expect that. Okay, and this time I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up and go around. You'll see. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to create one of my little bump. Another one, I'm going to move it out a bit, out a bit, and then I'll have that coming back here and around. These are found in medieval 
manuscripts in um, William Morris's, you know, the arts and crafts movement, in some of his designs. And they must probably go back to ancient times as well, or very similar things, you know, in Greek architecture, I would guess. So. Yeah. Draw them my own way, I think. They're never going to be exactly the same. But it's the little, little details that really help. So here I want this one. That's my centre line. And then I'm going to have my centre line coming around there like that. And there we are, I've got that going on under here. And that gives me some space to play around with things. And I think I didn't put any line weight, line thickness on these to just have them stand up a little bit from the elements around them. Or stand up, stand out from. Colour and shading will help to do that, but I do like to add some extra ink to help as well. I find art like this that is very intuitive. I haven't got a plan. I didn't know what I was going to draw when I sat down. I started, actually started there with that little bit just there and everything else has grown from there, you know just spreads out. I think I actually worked more or less up this bit, got round here and up here done, and then I started filling, adding other bits, moving outwards, as I'm doing now. Um, I really enjoy this. That's a bit of an odd shape there, so I'm going to fill it in with black. Even though there would be a petal there, it just doesn't feel right. So sometimes I fill in where there are little bits of petals with black as if there's a petal missing underneath or whatever. These black areas I do want to turn into starry nights. Starry nights, starry skies. But, um, and I may do that down here as well. I, I, I might fill this in with black and put some white patterns on, but I'm not gonna do that on this paper. If I do that, I'm going to do it digitally, so. And I'm likely to do, I may do black and do triply, so reverse this. So instead of black triangles on a white background, I'll have white triangles on a black background, which can be fun. So I've got that done. Now here, I think I would like to add another one of these flowers, but I'm tucking it behind. I'm not drawing it on its own. So I'm starting with the centre bit, and then I'm going to add some of these dots that give that kind of heaviness or that intensity of ink towards the bottom as well as thickening the line towards the bottom just to say it almost gives a feeling or an illusion that we've got some shadow there so this has got some volume to it and then I'm going to start somewhere in the middle I'm going to decide what size petals I want these ones are fairly long and thin but they don't have to be identical. That's the lovely thing about drawing. These flowers, is in nature, they are all very similar, but they're never identical in size. So here, I perhaps would have a, the end of the petal there. Again, I'm just going to add some line weight to these just to help to lift it up and that just finishes this little section off where these leaves are with the flowers and it just feels that that's a natural place to end this okay i've got seed pods here and i wouldn't mind adding some more of them because i think when i get when i do things like this i tend to get to the point where i go okay I could keep adding lots and lots of different patterns, but it's quite nice to pick up things that are similar or because they're never going to be identical, but sim similar themes or similar shapes and use them throughout. And as I look at this, I could use these or I could use something like this. And part of me is thinking something like this would be quite nice because 
I can make it a bit more open than these are. And I think that openness is what's needed here. Is that open space where there's not so much ink. So I'm starting with a semicircle and I will add some extra ink to this side and a bit more ink to this side. Here I've got a wobbly line around and I'm tempted to do that again. But I could also just do, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is something a little bit different where instead of having quite a curved wobbly line, I'm going to do one that a bit more random in shape, but roughly works its way round in an arc to go with this. I've moved my pen so my line isn't quite so thick, but I am going to go and add line thickness to the left until I get to the top. So here I'll add a little bit there, but I'm going to start adding the line weight to the right now as I start to go down the other side. So I'd like to say thank you to you all, all of you who've left me such lovely encouraging messages. I really, really appreciate that. But to say, you know, I share more, not for, not for sympathy, not for um, anything like that, but I know that we all go through things in life and sometimes we can feel very alone, that nobody else experiences these things, that, you know, there's something wrong with you. And I've learnt that Although the exact circumstances, what's led to the feelings and the exhaustion and the, the problems getting mood up and keeping your mood up may be different. The experience of having this kind of period of time with the emotional instability, I'll, I'll put it, makes me sound like a complete drama queen, like I'm going to go off the deep end, but it's not. It's my, my moods are pretty stable most of the time. Most of the time. Um, but you're not alone. And that there are people there who do understand and get it. And if I'd only known that, and known that the way that I thought and felt as I was growing up, from a young age, I've always had anxiety. That um, perhaps I'd have seen, you know, found help or sought out help earlier in life. Not, not you know, because I only know how my brain works. I don't know how your mind and your emotions work. I only know how mine do. And you make that assumption that everybody must be like this because nobody talks about what it's like to have healthy, healthy you know, good mental health and good emotional health. And nobody tells you what it's like to have poor mental and emotional health and how they have a knock-on effect on your physical health, which can also have a knock-on effect on the others. All interlinked. All interlinked. And if I'd known when I was younger, I may have sought out help a lot younger. And the same goes for some other things that have come to light recently. You're thinking, blimey. But again, that may be a tale for another day. Not yet. <laughs> I know I'm teasing you. You'll all be trying to guess what it's all about now. And as again, it's nothing to worry about, but it's part of my journey through life to understand and to know myself better and to accept myself for who I am. And... Uh, Always a bit of a struggle. So here, I've just done the same thing. That's a huge one though, but I'm happy with that. And it's these areas in between that I'm looking for. And um, those little areas where there's nothing much going on, where you can leave some open space and places where your eyes can rest in such a busy pattern. Again, I'm just going to go back to the 03. So, 
So if you see me using the black pen, it's the O3. And I'm mainly using the O5. But not entirely. If I use the O1, I will tell you. I really do need to dig these out to put in a pencil case downstairs. So I, I've currently got um, a big felt bag that's sitting under my coffee table that has a sketchbook and notebooks and supplies in. But I haven't got any. I've got the Copic SP multi-liners in the pencil case, but said they look rather not quite so black. And I really want that contrast. So, um, I'm going to have to find my stash of these. I know where they are. It's not a major job, but I must remember to get them out and take some downstairs. So, I'm still having trouble with my damaged muscles or ligaments, tendons, whichever from my, my pulled muscles between my ribs and my shoulder, the back. So I've ordered a writing slope today to go on my desk here because I'm sure that the posture I take when I'm drawing is not good for me. I'm hoping these lines will not clash with these leaves. Just to help it out, I'm going to thicken the lines with that leaf there just to help it stand out that little bit, and this one as well. They look a bit clunky at the moment, but hopefully they won't remain looking too clunky as time goes on. There we go. So I do want another one of these, and I think I may pop one here. But I'm going to make it smaller, shrink it down a little bit. And then that will give me an interesting, that's really giving me a very interesting edge there. But it will here as well. So it's looking. So I sort of decide where to start putting the thickness on the other side of these bumps when I get sort of to the top of it. But it's not exactly critical. You could stick to one side all the way around and it would work in a different kind of way. But I have in my mind nearly always that I've got a light source in the top, top right, top right, top left, somewhere. Um, it just makes sense that the shadow moves around that way. I think I've got something like that. So let's do this one. It's nice when the lines you're adding go in a different direction to the ones that are in the motif, the design element that is right next door. Makes me happy. The only place I've had problems with that really is where these leaves over here are next to these weird kind of mushroomy things. It's almost like we're looking at some strange kind of mushroom from the bottom with the stem belonging there. But we have no stem. Why have you taken the stem out? Do you love a mushroom? I do, I really do love mushrooms, it has to be said, very much. So, I've got these here, so that's nice because I've now got this kind of idea here, but in a slightly different way. So I'm using the same kind of shape, same kind of idea, but just executing it differently. Now I do need to do something here with these edges or something behind them. There's lots of things I could do. And I think I'm going to take these shapes and use them as a way of 
giving me the opportunity to perhaps fill some of these spaces in a different way. So here, well, you missed it because I went off the page, but I've drawn this kind of shape here. It's a bit, you no, know, it's it's got a slightly different shape, but I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a central part in it so it becomes the centre of a leaf. And then what I need to do, apart from joining these with that little bit of ink, I'm going to be looking at where I want shadows to be. So I want this to appear that this is in shadow, but I also want this side of this to be in shadow because I am going to go and add some rings here in this section so it looks like hopefully we've got something that curves up and over. So I need want to do that one. This kind of thing here as well, like that. And again, this side here will be, this will be shadowy because it's the left. And this one will be shadowy a little bit on the right. So I want this kind of shape in the middle again. And I am going to put the shadow on that side be a bit consistent and then I'm going to have these arches here that look like they are bending upwards. Now it may be that I'll come back and I'll add some spots to these leaves, in fact I may very well do that very shortly. Let's get these in, as many in as I want to have in, which doesn't mean I'm going to put them all the way across, far from it. There. And then move these. This one, I will put that darker edge on this side, which is logically where it should have been with that one. But it's fine because it will work. And it also may make you think, well, we, hang on, which one's sticking up? Which one's sticking down? Go. So that's that's neaten that up that side. On this side, I'll do something else. I'm thinking, do I want to put something in these? I think I might, you know, I'm going to use this. I'm just going to. Yeah, I like that. So, in Zentangle terms, I'm creating an aura around this inner bit. I'm starting from the point of the leaf. I'm just going around like this. And I think I may thicken this line on the opposite side to this, to where the thickness is already, if that makes sense. So on this leaf, this inner bit, I'd put the dark line there. So rather than going here and making that thicker, I've done it on the opposite one, so here it'll be this side. And that will mess with the sense of volume as well. So that's interesting. And because I can't leave well enough alone, I'm just going to put some of this kind of shape in. Got hankering for ice cream, which is no good for me at all. So that actually, I actually like those. And I think I might put some thickness in these just to muck about with that idea of volume and ins and outs. So I now have that. So that's beginning to look interesting. Okay, so I do want to do something. I'm going to carry on over in this part, trying 
not to squash my paper here because I'm beginning to move my paper off the edge of my desk. So I think here We're going to do a kind of a mooka in a zentangle term. So it's a curve and I spiral around and on the end of it I've put a lovely big teardrop shape. I'm then going to take this pen and I'm going to go back here like so. So that's another way of adding an arch shape. So I'm going back to these rounded arches instead of having a distinct you know architectural arch i'm now using nature to add that in and again it creates some space here which i can do something with and i'm tempted to actually have another one coming off here growing off it i'm tempted but i'm not going to i'm going to turn this upside down so sorry for making you a bit seasick. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create an aura around this, but it's going to be a broken aura. So I'm splitting it up into sections and in between each section I'm just putting a little seed. So I think that'll be really quite lovely. Like so. There we go. So that just makes it that little bit different here. And I am going to add some line weight in places where I know we're going to need it. That'll be fine there. Perhaps this has got a bit at the bottom, but I think I'll add just that little bit extra there. That's nice. That's different. I like that. I do like that. And that means that I could, and I'm going to, add some more. Like this. Another, another section of it. So even though it's a new pattern here, the shapes echo one another. And I think that is what goes through my head when I do things. It's not always about cramming in as many patterns as you can or as many motifs. It's about, in my mind, I'm beginning to understand anyway, it's about how can I repeat these things? How can I make them feel like they belong together? And by using these different shapes and forms, or you know, the basic shapes, but varying how you complete the shapes, I think is how you create that. I mean, I've got this kind of thing going on here. I've got a different version here where I've, instead of having a round circle, I've created it pointy. And so that makes some kind of sense. These are a, um, a progression or a, a variation on this broad variation but still a variation. These here, the flowers are just the flowers. And these leaves, we've got a similarity here with the way they bend over but I've added more detail to these in these places. So that works nicely and I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do Similar kind of thing here. So I've created that spiral with the teardrop shape in, and I'm going to draw the other side of this in. I'm going to thicken the bottom of these and round it, so on. Do the same here. This would be thicker because it's at the bottom, as would that, as would all of this side. 
just like so. So I've got the same thing going on here, but I'm not going to finish it like this. I'm going to do something different. And for this one, I say I'm going to do something different. Yeah, I am. So what I'm going to do here that's a bit different is I'm going to add this kind of broken aura. What would you call it? Bricks and seeds or bricks and orbs, I think is the Zentangle term for these kinds of shapes, isn't it? I say I think because my brain just isn't working on with that at the moment. It's just not computing, really. It'll be fine. Another good night's sleep. So that, it's the same kind of thing, but it looks quite different. And it would look even more different if I do the... Um, if I put this over the top or another layer underneath, which shall I do? You'll all be saying, do this, do this. I actually think I'm going to do it over the top. And look what I did there. Here, instead of starting like I did over here, I started with this kind of triangle shape. So I don't have that awkwardness that I feel I've got there. Or it's a different way of completing it. Whenever I draw, there's always things to learn and always things to experiment with. I'd love to draw in this kind of intuitive kind of way where I don't have a preconceived idea of what I'm going to do. Sometimes I may start with a particular motif or pattern that I think oh, I'd, I'd really like to you know, have, have this as a big presence in my drawing or in one of the main ones. And sometimes I just decide to start somewhere with a favourite shape of mine and just see what will come. And most of the time it oddly works out, which is quite surprising to me. But there we go. So we've got two of these, then they, they look different but they, because they are essentially, but we still have... This lovely kind of interest going on and I think with these I'm just going to draw these bits in and I'm going to leave these fairly open I don't know what I'm going to put in them I will work it out eventually I've got this area here now to do something with and I'm going to do something and then I'm going to call this to a to a halt because I'm beginning to get stiff and sore again. I'm working at my desk. I've ordered a writing slope. I've got I've got drawing boards that I can put here, but they're so big, they're all A3. And I want something that's a bit smaller and, and doesn't take up so much space on my desk in the hope that I can get better posture while I'm working, because working flat like this is not good for me. And I just feel crowded and I just find it all bulky as it is because my desk isn't huge. So, okay, so what should we do? All right. I'm looking down here to see what I can repeat. And what I might do is take some of these flowers and just put a couple of them up here just to move this through and to say, well, we're here as well they are one of my main themes here, aren't they? And I shall draw some nice big chunky kinds of petals here because I think that would be quite nice. Got those dots coming around and I think I'll pop them all the way around there. So I've got these happening. I want another one next door but I'm just going to go and add some ink on the sides of these petals. 
bottom and left, as it were. Another one would fit nicely here. Again, I think I might just put some of these dots round, because it sort of would go around under here, like so. Just want to make that side a bit thicker and this side perhaps a little bit thicker, and then we'll add some petals. So what I'm doing is, instead of going from the bottom and drawing, I'm, I'm starting close to where I'm going to be getting my petal to go in a different direction. And I'll do the same here, so... Because I know that if I try to draw along the whole of that line, I may actually do a good job of it, or I may end up making a real mess. And that works out quite nicely there, because that has given me space to just fill that in with that little bit of black. That'd be nice there. You know me, if you know me, you'll know that I'm not happy with just two, but here is a perfect place for a third one. And that then, I think, will finish this little section off. And I think I might actually do the petals that little bit shorter. Because it just has that feeling that that's what's needed here. So let's have a look, finish these little bits off here, and that looks not too bad, does it? What do you think? I've got quite a bit left to do because I've got this section up here. So I've already been working here for nearly an hour with you, and so I've done all of this here. Um, most of this was done before, just tidying up. I don't know if this has explained anything. I hope so. I hope you've enjoyed. If nothing else, that you can pick up some of the patterns and motifs that I like to use and practice those. And I will scan this in um, in a moment, as it is, and put that on the um, front page. Not that I've drawn everything on the video, but I'll leave a note in that. Oh, it's Dimmock. I've got to remember Dimmock. So I hope you've enjoyed this time with me as I draw and talk about this and waffle on about my ups and downs in mood at the moment. And I hope look forward to seeing you again soon. So until then, take care, look after yourselves and find time to be creative. Goodbye for now. Bye.